does anybody from Hilton travel here? Smart time. Have a quick sum up. Um, knucklehead, knucklehead adolescent. Uh, and even, I mean, even as an adult, I was just still a, a knucklehead adolescent. I ain't really have a too much of a relationship with my family or my loved ones because of the illness. You know, my grandfather caught it. It kind of you know drove a wedge in us. You know, me, my grandparents, whatever. But um, yeah, I was just running the streets, doing whatever, trying to make ends meet, hustling here and there, taking, doing whatever. Stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing, basically. Okay. Well, just to cut straight through to the end, uh, I guess my end game or what I hope to see or you know foresee out of this union, uh, something to bring me closer to my grandparents. I had a brief conversation, but um, I, I didn't always have the, I haven't always had the best relationship, you know, with my parents through the you know big age difference. My grandparents raised me since birth, but uh, big age difference gap, so it was always. A lot of push and pull, give and take, and we never really saw eye to eye. But getting older, you know, it, it, it changes things, change of that nature. So, in the end, it kind of just brought me closer to my parents. And my grandfather got sick. You know, what, actually, I wanted to accomplish spending uh, a significantly a lot more time with my grandparents because before my time was just you know taken up by women in the streets, just running around doing unimportant things that you know don't really matter and the bigger picture of things in the grand scheme. So um, it really, uh, several ways, not only just spending more time with my grandfather and my grandparents, but you know, actually caring about what's going on with them and you know, being aware of small things like doctor's appointments and my grandfather's medications and things like that. Like people take things like that for granted and they don't, you know, they don't really care about you. Love your, you love your parents or whoever you're caring for, you love them, but we don't always have time in the day or, you know, to you know, break down and see about what's going on with them, or you know, actually sit down and ask them how do you feel today, or what's going on with you, or is your medications running out? So it really kind of intricated my life into my parents' life a lot more, and I, I really appreciate that. Plain and clear, I would have to say the biggest struggle that kept me away from them is financial struggle. So uh, pretty much cut and clear, I didn't have money, so I had to go out and get money out of New Adam. That drove a wedge between me and my parents because they didn't want me to do that. Of course, they cared for me, so they didn't want me to take that path. Also, it just, it, when you're not financially stable or set, it, it does things to you, you know, psychologically or mentally. So that can also, you know, and that's what was driving the wedge between me and my parents. I was always mad because I didn't have money for things or to help out. So I, I used to just blow up and we would have our differences because of my internal struggles and things like that. I refuse to be a burden on anybody in my life, like not just parents or family, friends. I don't care if you're a stranger in the street. My grandfather, you know, I'm real thankful. That's why I'm glad I got the chance to take care of man. But he always taught me, and he instilled in me a work ethic. And I pride nothing like that. But you know, you're just supposed to stick to yourself, take care of your business, work, and take care of your family. And he, and he, he put that in me deep, deep, deep. So. The fact that I couldn't contribute or that I wasn't holding up my part of the bargain, you know, as his son or as a man, <clears throat> kind of kept me, that was an internal struggle. Physically, it was just on the outside, it was just not having money. I gotta go hustle so I can't be here. But internally, it was like, I let my grandfather down because he raised me this way and he instilled this in me and I just let it go by the wayside. And so that was kind of messing me up a lot because I just thought I was kind of like a failure to them. And I'm not going to come around and I didn't want to come around and have to help my grandfather and then also depend on them and like you paying me to take care of you because I didn't feel like that was right. Uh, well, we had actually been through a couple of different other companies or you know, a couple of different other places and they just simply didn't pan out. Like a couple of the nurses or the home health care aides just wasn't, they didn't really care about my grandfather. They would just sit, come around and just do whatever, but they didn't, they didn't have his best interest or his wife's best interest at heart. So once the last nurse stepped out, I'm like, it don't make no, I'm like, I need to be here. Like, I need to be here with my grandfather. So that was the, realizing that, you know, ain't nothing more important than family and family should be the one to take care of family instead of letting the outsider come in and take care of your family first. I mean, if that has to be an option, so be it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like the first option should always be family, kin, blood, or whatever's closest to you in your heart. And my grandfather is my heart, so I can't see nobody else taking care of him more properly. Well, actually, uh, the reliable aid, uh, my mother,
actually. She's the one who uh, word of mouthed me to that. Um, like I said, a couple of the nurses before, they just wasn't panning out. And she was like, you know, she just wanted me to come around and start helping out a lot more. So I asked her, I'm like, well, where's his nurses or his home health care? And she was like, they not, basically they weren't doing a good job. So I'm, that's what kind of put me on the path. Like, right, let me start stepping it up with my grandfather. So then she was like, well, reliable aid, you know, health, home health care is blah, blah. So she handed me the information and just off and running from there. And after that, it kind of made it easier because before I was just kind of helping out my grandfather around the house. But then when I got with Reliable and really became his healthcare aide, it kind of solidified it more. And he instilled such a good work ethic in me that once I officially got the job as his home healthcare aide, then that work ethic that he put instilled in me kicked in. So now it's like, okay, I'm really his nurse now. Like I got to be his man nurse for real now. So yeah, that was it. That was a good union, good business venture. Uh, first off, is mindset. Uh, I don't think a lot of people kind of take for granted or take lightly the true title of a home healthcare aid and what it takes, not only physically, but the psychological and mental capabilities. So it was a couple blocks. Like, I'm like, I'm not qualified to do this. So look at my grandfather, you know, he medicines and needles and all kind of stuff. Like, I'm not qualified to do this. So it was nervousness, um, kind of, a lot of push mostly for myself just internal war with myself um doubt from other people like you sure you can take care of pop and da -da 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 this and like, I was, I, I was mom. You. right he, he, he did and i didn't know that but i figured you know he needs a professional or doctor's offices and things of that nature thinking it's more if large it's bigger than eagle brown baby. that's what i was figuring but you know come to find out family love and closeness I'm gonna just give you half the list because the whole list kind of, but um, I mean, financial stability for one, that was the first thing, maybe not the most important thing, but that was up there. Financial stability, uh, better relationship with my parents, uh, more accountability. Being there for my grandfather's appointments and being on time and coming there when he, you know, when I tell him to come, so accountability, uh, family, responsibility, punctuality. I can go on for days, man. Like, <laughs> networking also. You know, a lot of other people that know that I'm a home health care for my grandfather, I work for a lot, but they be like, well, how do you get into that? How do you do that? It was cool. Just, it just felt like home again. Uh, like I said, for a long time, like I've been Troublesome. I had troublesome pants. That's the best way I could have troublesome pants. So, you know, you, you can't have the best or closest relationships with your loved ones when you, you know, when you when you want the wrong path or you're doing something other. So, once I started with Reliable and started taking care of my grandfather, it just brought the family back together again. You know, I was raising all my grandparents and it was only us three. It was always only us. My aunt that was for a little bit when we were younger, but for the most part, I was pretty much only child. My grandparents raised me by itself. So, when I got with Reliable and came back, it just, you know, just, I felt like a kid again. It brought the family back together. And that put a lot more things back in perspective as far as, you know, what they taught me, how they raised me. So it's like, what was together once fell apart, came back together, and then just blossomed. 